Hey everyone. So a few videos ago, I showed that there's a new data frame C sharp library out, but since then there's been quite a few changes and updates to it. And it's even on NuGet now. So in this video, I want to go over the data frame library and just show some of the things that you can do with it. So I'm here in a blank Jupyter notebook. You can see I already have the .NET kernel installed for it. And to start using the data frame, I need to get it from NuGet. And in order to do that, I use the pound r command. And I need to specify that this library is from NuGet. So I put in NuGet, a colon, and then the name of the library to download. And so in this case, it'll be Microsoft.data.analysis. Just let that install. All right, so that got installed. And in order to use it, we need to import it with the using statement. Right. And before we mess with the data, we need to do an additional step here. And I'll just paste this in. So we need to tell Jupyter how to format our data frame data. So we just run this. So now that we got that set up, we can import our data. And we can do data frame dot load CSV to load in the CSV file. And I'll be loading in the housing CSV file. And I'll display it. There we go. So we got our data loaded in correctly. So a couple of methods that we can use to get some, some information on our data. Uh, the first one is the info method. And that just gives uh, some some data types on all of our columns and our length uh, of our all of our rows. And if you notice here, it says excluding null values. So any null values won't be included in this length. And in fact, if you look at the total bedrooms, this length doesn't match the length of the other columns. So that tells us that total bedrooms has some null values in it. Another method we can do is the description method here. And if you're familiar with pandas, this is pretty much the same as the describe method that it has. And that gives the length of each of the columns as well, the number of rows, but also gives the max value of each value in the columns, as well as the min value and the mean value. And speaking of columns, we can get some column information by calling the columns property here. And this does the, the name, data type, the length, but also gives the no count that it finds in each of the columns. So like before, we saw the total bedrooms has some no values, and this confirms that it has 207 rows uh, that has no values. And there are a couple of methods that we can use to update all of our column names. So if we want to add some text to the beginning of each of our column names, we can use the add prefix method and give it a prefix to use, if you spell it correctly, of course. There we go. And so you see each of the columns has that housing underscore in front of it. And similarly, we can add a suffix to do the same that appends on the, the back of each column name. One thing that's pretty useful is to use the clone method to clone a new object of our original data. So this is helpful because we can just, as soon as we load in our data, we can clone it and then we can work on the clone. And then if we need to, we can always go back to the original data set. Like if we make a lot of mistakes on some data cleaning or something like that, we can always just revert back and work from the original data. We can use the sample method to take a random sample of, of our data and we can pass in the number of rows that we want to return back. So pass in 10, so it gives us 10 rows and each of these rows are randomly collected. And similar to pandas, we can take the head of our data or which is pretty much the first set of rows and we can specify 
again here the number of rows that we want to return so we return the first five rows here we can also use the tail method to return the last set of rows so we'll pass in five so i'll return the last five rows in our data set and let's revisit those nulls that we found we can use the drop nulls method it'll drop all the null value all the rows that have null values in it we can also fill in the nulls instead of dropping them so we saw that the total bedrooms column had nulls in it and so what i can do is i can get the mean value of the total bedrooms column and to do that I can do similar to pandas where in brackets I can specify what column name I want to take and I have access to the data in that column and then I can call the mean method and get the mean value of the get the mean of all the values in the total bedrooms column and then I'll set the data back to the fill nulls method and I can pass in the bedrooms value to fill all the nulls with However, we'll get an error here that the value needs to be a string. So we can just call the toString method there. There we go. And then all the nulls are filled with that mean value. We can also sort our data by a specific column here. So I can sort by housing median age here. You can see a median age is sorted and this is gonna be ascending by default. If I want to sort by descending, I can do the same method and then pass in false as a second parameter, which tells it if it should be ascending or not. And now we see our, total, our housing median age is sorted descending. We can also group our data by a certain column. So I can group by ocean proximity here and then I can get the count of all the rows in that group. So we have was it, five groups here, and we can see that the less than an hour to the ocean proximity has the most rows in this data set, and we see the island ocean proximity has the least. And the last thing I wanna go over here is that we can filter our data. So I can take the data and then get the column uh, let's see, median house value from it. Uh, pretty similar to pandas there. Uh, unfortunately, unlike pandas, I can't just say I want all the data where the median house value is greater than 500,000. Unfortunately, it's going to error at me if I do that, saying it can't apply the greater than operand to it. However, a couple of methods that uh, we can use instead. So for the greater than, I can use element wise greater than and then pass in 500,000. And we see all of our rows now have a median house value greater than 500,000. All right, so that's just uh, several of the things that you can do uh, currently with the data frame library. Pretty much gonna be uh, what you would use instead of pandas for in python you can use this in, in c sharp uh, and this is a very this is an early version of this too so look out for more things that you can do with this so i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching we'll see you later